Welcome everybody into map number one of our second best of three of the day for the HGC, for the HGC, for the Hanzo Genji Cup uh, round robin. Uh, we're in the third of four days of round robin action. A little bit of housekeeping at the start of all of this, uh, at the start of the series, just to kind of catch you up if you don't know. Maybe you came in late. Maybe you don't know. This is an NA based tournament. Uh, no shenanigans in the sense of meta madness or tournament ban, so all heroes are available. Uh, you can pick and play my Ev three games in a row if it's not banned away. Uh, obviously, bans at the top only pertain to the, to the map draft, and that's really about it. It's not like we're gonna carry over bans, though. That would be kind of fun, though. That would be kind of fun. It's, it's like it's kind of like a like a, a mutation of meta madness. Is the three bans are what carry over instead of the ten heroes? That'd be kind of interesting. That'd be kind of interesting actually to do it that way. Uh, but either way. It's it's not as it's not as uh, drastic in the difference in in play, but also I feel like you can get some interesting bands coming through. Regardless, oh, you mean shenanigans? <laughs> that movie, I I love that movie so much. Uh, we were literally quoting it yesterday. We have Diablo, Lucy on the left hand side, Hogger and Maev on the right band away. Starting things out for the side of HGC EU lull, is it an early Genji priority? Is it going to be a tracer grab? Do we see a blaze early on? Like what are what are they going to be grabbing here? It's gonna be Sylvanas to start out this draft. I don't hate this whatsoever. Good push potential, good mobility. Uh, Sylvanas is just a through and through, like solid, solid hero. Left side, though, what will we start out with for 30k? Like the, the NA team to beat, realistically. It's going to be a Brightwing Blaze, so nothing nothing too flashy, nothing too crazy. Just very simple start. Going to grab a solid healer and a solo laner. Now, is there any consideration into anti-healing onto Brightwing? Uh, do we do we consider a Deckard Kane with Emerald? Do we consider an Ana Biter Grenade? Uh, maybe even a Johanna picked up here with uh, 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 Sins Exposed level 7. That's an option as well. Uh, it is going to be the Johanna. We will have a Leoric as well for the solo lane. I like that quite a bit. Good, More mobility as well. This actually could be a Falling Sword Johanna. There's a lot of mobility currently for, for HCC EU low. We get into our next ban phase. Uh, healer is needed as well as more damage. Either they're going to target Dino or they're going to target Yasu, I think. Uh, I feel like it's either going to be a healer or some sort of uh, dino specialty to be banned away. Tracer's really good for this map still, um, but even the dino can go into false dead as well. So maybe you lock, you, you ban out a healer and try and limit what Yasu's able to do. And I do like the Decker Kane ban here. You get rid of that emerald potential. Big lockdown. Uh, I mentioned Falling Sword for Johanna, but even then, like, Bless Shield into Haradra Cube with a... Uh, scroll of ceiling is pretty big. That's a target ban onto Cure Zera tool. So it leads me to believe that there's going to be something. Di Dino's going to play something squishy and mobile, and that leads me to believe that he's going to be leaning into that tracer. Could be a Mephisto grab as well. Mephisto is fantastic for this map. Chromie's up and available. Uh, there's there's a lot of different directions we could be seeing these teams go into. There's the Hanzo grab in the left hand side. Do we pair that into a Genji, or is this going to be like a Muradin main tank? A Nubrak is up as well. Varian will be grabbed, so I do like the Shattering Throw. Shattering Throw into the Jahana will be really nice. I don't think we'll see Mortal Wound. I, I honestly think it is going to be a, a taunt sort of setup here. Um, Chromie would round out the draft of the 30k really, really well. Gives you that big burst, gives you some extra wave clear. Hanzo can then just prioritize simple geometry build. Uh, you could see Q build Hanzo. That does work out in this map quite a bit. We do see auto attack here and there. There's going to be a Rhaegar. So big heals coming out between Rhaegar and Brightwing. And there's the hyper mobility or the extra mobility or the dino special. We got a Genji. But there's a lot of lockdown. Polymorph, Taunt, Jet Propulsion. Level 20, we could, uh, we'll probably see Bullseye as well. I do like the Chromie quite a bit. Um, granted, slowing Sands could be mitigated by so much. I actually, you know what? I want them to go Mephisto here. I'd like this to be a Mephisto, because, like, slowing Sands or Temporal Loop won't get much value. Wraithwalk, Will of the Forsaken, Cleanse, of course, Johanna with Iron Skin. Ooh! Okay. All right. Carol will be ravaging his way through uh, map number one. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. I'm excited. This is going to be a really fun best of three.
All right, here we go into map number one in this best of three series. Get your predictions in. The Twitch gamble's up and ready to go for all of you wonderful humans at home. Thanks for watching the stream. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. And as always, if you're enjoying yourself, be sure to drop a follow if you're watching over on YouTube. Hello, YouTube chat, or hello, YouTubers. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe over there on YouTube so we can grow the YouTube page. And uh, I think we're just around 600 subs over on YouTube, so if we can break over that, that'd be nice. Uh, we, got, we got a ways to go to 1,000, but hey, every little bit is appreciated. And uh, be sure to use all 16 of your Google accounts to subscribe over there, because honestly, the number is, is, is what helps. You can't bet against Kieran, and I can't blame you on that idea. Liam Blaze in the top lane for the members of 30k. Nice Mount Skinnergy right there. We'll be seeing a Legacy Brightwing. Cure on his standard Halloween horse, his tried and true with Kerrigan. We'll see Big Pex McFlex, aka Yeah Boy, aka Fancy Pants, playing the Hanzo and Cattle. Yes, the Cattle is going to be on that variant. Pumped up Pato. Or I guess it's one of the versions of Pato. On the right hand side, it's HCCU Lol. Who gives a crap? No, I'm just kidding. It's going to be Dino on the Genji, Opaka, Sylvanas, Nagram with your Johanna. Hazuobs will be playing Leoric and Yasu on the Rhaegar. I will dash into your combos, no problem. There you go. What a what a what a good bud. Scatter from Big Pex McFlex gets a few free stacks off of Hazuobs as Kerrigan has already gone into bottom lane. Blaze is already showing in top. So it looks like this is just going to be a initial setup. A little bit of a slow in the rotation, or a little bit of a dismount. I guess a slow in the rotation is a good way to say it. From Cattle here. Kerrigan here not going to be pulled in by a condemn looking at our level ones it will be that overpower we're going to have a uh, fury of the swarm for that uh kerrigan osin's renewal for our leoric which is going to be healing and then you get regeneration globes that give you a 20 second cooldown on that 120 uh, charge in from varian but he's not a real boy yet he just kind of pressures the enemy setting things up maybe for big pex mcflex to grab more stacks on that simple geometry already 10 stacks not too bad cure waiting for level four to get that sharpened blades or ravage questing talent until then it's just going to be grabbing some camps doing double soak duties blaze getting harassed in top but liam will be wise to the situation pops the pyromanium bla b backs away safely level four is actually a pretty big transition in 30k's playstyle. until then it's kind of passive but after that it's like oh wait i say that and cattle's like look i may not be a real boy but i can at least charge on to this Rhaegar and maybe put some pressure but cure is focused on soaking the waves he does land a combo primal grasp into that impale and dino steps out no shuriken mastery for him just yet he's gonna pick that up just now Frozen Punisher, if I forgot to mention, will be in the bottom lane first. There's that Sharpened Blades for Cure. Now, oftentimes, teams will give over a first objective phase to be able to focus on the Kerrigan level 1 stacking or level 4 stacking. But, with this being a Frozen Punisher, I feel like you don't want to give this up. Like, if it was Mortar, maybe you'd consider it. We'll see. We'll see what Cure ends up doing. But I, I feel like the, the smart call with it being a Frozen Punisher is prioritize the objective phase, win that out, and then go back to soaking up. The sharpened blades. Now, why why level four for sharpened blades? Minions and heroes that die within 1.5 seconds of being hit by Ravage increase its damage up to a maximum of 75. And let's go ahead and pull ourselves out of the game. We have a DC. Up. Welcome back, everybody. Because transparent raided, we are now able to actually get back into the game. We were just waiting for transparent. We were just waiting for your raid. Uh, thank you very much, bud. How was your uh? Anti Smurf stream? I, I saw your stream title. How was your, uh, how are the games, bud? How many Smurfs did you count? I guess not anti Smurf stream, but how many Smurfs did you count today? We're back into it. Cure Ravage is in, trying to test out his ping immediately onto Hazuobs with a Ravage Impale combo. Thank you for waiting for me. I, I just, I knew you wanted to see this game. I knew it. I had, I, I felt it in the heart of the cards, so uh, thanks for thanks for raiding over. I really do appreciate it, though. Welcome in, raiders. Uh, if you're new to the stream, my name's Bahamut. Do a lot of hot content here. We do other stuff as well. Next week, we're going to be doing a lot of Elden Ring. A lot of Elden Ring next week. 
Nine Smurfs in eight games. That's not many. That seems like many to me. Brightwing goes down, Legacy taken out. The fight does continue in bottom lane as Blaze is working on this objective and will be able to grab this. But Cure and Legacy fall. Liam, can he get out of this alive? Uh, he tries to jet propulsion, pops his adrenaline to impact, throws down the oil. Varian throws an alliance. Mod dives in once again, but no taunt available, not for one more second here. The Punisher was grabbed by the members of 30k, and this is going to push onto the fort front gate. What's up, Hassler? Good lockdown here. A couple auto attacks coming through. Genji with the deflect. Little scatter off the sidewall as well. Big jump from the Punisher. Nice route as well. Varian wants to find this kill, and he gets the taunt onto Johanna immediately and does manage to take down the tank of HTC EU lull. And the Punisher expires, but the fort front gate will be completely eradicated. I play in Plat, so we usually get 12 to 14. Wow. That's a lot, actually. That's that's insane to me. Face shift from Brightwing into the top lane. Liam getting his health bolstered. And has the peekaboo from level 7 on that Brightwing. Yep. So not only does it give extra vision, but you're going to be seeing a good chunk of shielding as well. Turn taunt on to Hazuab's. Kerrigan right here. Hazuab's able to avoid that Primal Grasp Impale. Is there a Ravage available? No, they leave Hazuab's with like 200 HP. No kill into our uh, German Protoss player. <laughs> I wonder what Hazuobs thinks of the Celestial from uh, Stormgate. I'm curious. I'm not sure if he got to play any or anything like that. Mortar Punisher for the mid lane coming up. Currently have Dino getting a d dismount onto Cattle here. 40 some stacks. As the top lane fort front gate is locked down by Hopaka. Charge. No taunt activated. There's a taunt onto Sylvanas towards the end of all of this, but. Kerrigan currently in bottom lane, ravaging around. 51 out of 75 stacks. Second Punisher will be Mortar in the mid lane. And the face shift from Brightwing. And bolsters, big pecs, McFlex. Hanzo Obs doesn't land the drain. Dragon's arrow from Hanzo does come through. The Entomb from Hanzo Obs as well as a bunker down from Blaze. Wailing arrow from Sylvanas into a few enemies, but avoided by the bunker. Cure very low, trying to ravage around to build some assimilation shields. As Dino gets so very low, is there are twin flames to tickle the heals? There was, but not enough damage. 80-some HP for Dino, as a lot of HGC EU lull crew are going to hearth out for full, and that'll be scouted by the Sonic Arrow. Actually, a few of them are going to cancel, tap well, and this will be Blaze still in top lane, soaking things up for the members of 30k. Ultralisk war, war, uh, Warlord... Bunker, Blink Heal, Dragon's Air on the opposing side, and Tomb Wailing Arrow, X-Strike, Ancestor Healing, and Bless Shield. 53 stacks for our Genji. Actually, he's at 55, so he's got a few more to go on that. Saw Kerrigan was still closing in on that 75. I think it was 61 at the last second, as we have our stats at the bottom of the screen cycling through. 2-2 two two in kills, just a little over 12 experience, or level 12 for both these sides. And Fallen Shamans will be grabbed for top lane. And as I mentioned, it's going to be a Mortar Punisher for mid. Who's able to grab this? What is going to be achieved from said Punisher summon? Stim activated by Liam here. Trying to clear out some of these Skeletal Defenders. But a lot has already happened for HCC EU lull at 13 out of the 40. Also, Obs, keep in mind, does have that Neil Peasants for the extra damage on that Skeletal Swing to Monsters and Mercenaries. Really, really good clear on the shrine with this Bone King. And it looks like uh, 30k will give this away. Blaze soaks up top. Shuriken Mastery done by Dino. We've got Kerrigan ravaging around. So it looks like they, they didn't want to give over that first Punisher, but they're okay with giving the Mortar to allow Kier to try and finish out Sharpen Blades level 4. And I think he should be just about done. He might actually finish it off that way. But in top lane, currently, we have an Entomb Wailing Arrow. Sort of a DIY buried alive. Varian charging over to an ally. Gets out of the Entomb. A Dragon's Arrow from Big Pex McFlex. Stuns out the enemies. And that's really all we're going to see in top lane is some traded heroics. As the mid lane objective pushes through. Kerrigan just now finishing. 
sharpened blades. We got a blessed shield to initiate here. Kerrigan, here, trying to jump around, trying to get that assimilation shield and a good charge from, excuse me, a good scatter from Hanzo comes through. Nice bullseye as well, or a nice storm bow. Oh, a sonic arrow, excuse me. Yasuo almost going down in mid. Punisher will be cleared out by the keep front gate. A fort lost. And so far, structurally, the advantage is over to the side of HCC EU lull, but 30k, rallying. We'll see what they're able to do here. 4 to 2 in kills as Hanzo uses explosive air to clear out the wave. And cure. Kerrigan, done with that. Sharpened Blades already. Has the Boundless Fury. Does have the Chrysalis level 13 as well. It's actually going to be Mortal Wound for our Varian. No Shattering Throw into the Johanna Shielding. Looking to deny some healing with the, uh, more. it's 40%? 40% for 4 seconds, which is nice against Ancestral targets. Bottom four is going to be taken down. Almost taken down. Health pushed down to about 30% as we currently have our next objective phase in the bottom lane. Arcane Punisher for the third one of the game here as Liam is able to blast away from the enemy crew. Gets a little bit of soak off that mid lane wave. Four to two in kills. And that experience is helping out the side 30k get to level 16 a little bit faster. But it's about... Mm, I'd say three quarters of a level difference in total. HCC EU low recognize. Oh, Stim activated. Charge from the Varian as he goes in a little deep. Meanwhile, though, Silva. Okay, that's a great Dragon Zero. Jet Propulsion gets the stun. Varian comes in with the charge. That's an immediate taunt as it came off a cooldown. Cure tries to read Hazuab's. Wraithwalk ending location. Doesn't grab him, but still, the pick onto Sylvanas is huge. Genji. Gets a few shurikens. Kata with a auto attack in, or a little shield bash it looked like. So bottom fort does go down. Banner Dalaran will eat a few of those tower shots to allow this siege to happen. Top lane fort may be traded here. No minion wave available, so Dido trying to use max range on those shurikens. Does have that Shin Gun level 13 for the extra damage. It is Spectral Leech with Mithril Mace. And now the rotation. Looking at Hazuobs. He's got the Wraith walk out. Varian mounted. Going for a charge taunt target. Earth Grass Totem to slow things down. Swift Strike pulls Dino back as he was. Or excuse me. Taunt pulls back Dino after the Swift Strike. And our shrine for the bottom lane. How much HP on the top lane for it? Probably a couple thousand, actually. Uh, actually, no, 1,189. Impaling blades upgraded with the painful spikes. Top fort finally does go down. More ravages from Kerrigan here as... Condemn pulls Cure in, pops the Chrysalis, cleared out immediately, gets the phase shift from Brightwing, Dragon's Arrow comes through, Jet Propulsion will not connect, but Kerrigan ravages out and gets the double kill before the Ancestral comes through. I did see the Mortal Strike as well from Varian Applied. Primal Grass trying to chase down Nagram here. Bit of a split engagement as we have Leork able to Wraith walk out, Cure Tank in his Tower Shutter too, Nagram able to tap well. And no kill onto the main tank as Cattle <laughs> steps into mid. Not sure what he's intending to do here. And uh, he'll try and charge around, but I don't think that works anymore. All right. After starting one hour earlier yesterday, my brain's, it's like slightly thrown off. I don't know why. It was really nice to start earlier yesterday, though. We, we did seven hours of Elden Ring. Oh. By the way, uh, for those of you around, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the first boss that we fought, for those that remember, the first, the first thing I fought. There's so many memes around that now. And I'm like, yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm. Oh, dude, the DLC's so good, though. It's such a challenge. It's so much fun. Definite recommend, like, what is it, like $30, $40 for the DLC? It is so far really, really good. Taunt on to Hazuobs here, Mortal Strike as well, and he's taken down. 
It's a lot of Elden Ring. I was I was having such a good time yesterday. I was having so much fun yesterday. Alright, well bottom lane, 30k are looking to push in more, ravaging in from Cure. Bottom lane keep front gate is going to be taken down. And is this a, uh, are they trying to look to end? Johanna eats the jump, Dino actually had the pull on that. A little miscommunication coming through, but that's alright. Currently have the bottom keep worked on by... Okay, hold on! Hazuab's tried to do something, I don't know what, but immediately shut down. Adrenaline Stim activated by uh, Blaze here, and Dino's trying to pull this objective away, which opens up a window for a better team fight. Wailing her from Sylvanas, as we do also have the Crystals from Kerrigan activated. Currently have an extra strike onto the bunker from Blaze. Punisher's on core. Impale, youch. Dino does go down. Hey, Subdue is done by Johanna. Meanwhile, Hopaka is trying to Haunting Wave around. A good scatter off the sidewall will take out that Sylvanas. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is why you don't in insult CCL. Come on, stream deck. No, I'm just kidding. GG well played. 30k does manage to take this. Oh, wait, hold on. Team kill. Double team kill, double domination. 30k takes map number one. GG well played. Thirty K is the victor here. GG well played. All right, we're doing we're we're testing this for for purposes. I just want to see if if this is working properly. It is okay. Wonderful. Good. Welcome. It is uh, our raid alert is cycling between uh, Scorpion Punch and Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> I have thought about making, um, and I even mentioned this on stream a couple days ago, I thought about making the Zangief uh, quick change the channel into a, into a raid alert. I thought that'd be pretty good as well. I thought that'd be a good that'd be a good raid alert. But either way, let's go ahead and get set up for our, Oh, I didn't complete the prediction completely. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and get set up for another game. Uh, consider subscribing to the stream. We are currently 13 subs away from our goal. And if you're feeling generous, if you're feeling like you enjoy the stream, be sure to subscribe. If not... I guess enjoy ads or don't or what I don't know. I'm just, I'm doing my best here, chat. All right, I am back. Welcome everybody into map number two. We're heading to Sky Temple, and uh, interestingly enough, this will be the first pick priority going over to the side of 30k. The losing side of HCC EU Lull actually are uh, prioritizing a Sky Temple map pick. So we'll see how this all works out. Thanks everyone for hanging out here. Do appreciate you all watching the channel and rooting on, rooting and tooting for some teams. And uh, this is our second map and our second best of three of the day. A target ban onto Hazuab's Vikings. Do we get a uh, early target ban? No, I don't think we'll see an early target ban onto uh, Kyr's Zeratul. But we could see a uh, priority ban onto him in the second round, because this is a pretty decent map for Zeratul to roam and just kind of gank the, just gank around the map. Excuse me. All right, last band, do they get, yeah, what do they actually want to get rid of here? Because it was uh, maybe a Brightwing from Legacy. Now they get rid of Hogger, okay. So Brightwing is up and available. First pick over to the side of uh, 30K. Now some Sky Temple gamers, you like to see it. Some exciting stuff here. Uh, uh, Blaze is up again. Like, Liam could lock in Blaze. No, okay, they'll go ahead and grab a Brightwing at the start. I like this a lot. I, I like the Brightwing start. It's it's good global for this map. Speaking of globals, Dahaka's available. Falstead's available. They could lock in. Uh, HCCE Low could lock in a Dahaka Falstead early on. Uh, both of these heroes work out really well. The drag may be a little bit of an issue, but I think a lot of these players are kind of used to playing on this ping. It's going to be a Nubrak and Blaze. Okay, so... 
We're going to be able to have a lot of beetles, which can uh, dis uh, distract the Temple Guardians, so Anubra can solo objective phases fairly easy without losing too much HP. Uh, as I mean, same same thing can be grabbed here for 30k. I mean, honestly, the uh, Brightwing and uh, the Brightwing Dahaka could be nice. If you want to go to the triple global threat, I don't hate that either. I am curious if one of these teams will lean into an Abathur. Abathur is wonderful for this map. Mule can be summoned every 60 seconds, uh, as it has 40 seconds of active time and heals up nearly 4,000 uh, HP on a fort. And so uh, if, if, if the mule's not cleared away, it only has a 20-second downtime, as it has an active cooldown counter. So uh, I don't hate the idea of an Abathur here. We could see, like, Abathur Samuro, but I don't know if these teams are going to lean that direction for Sky Temple. We will have a Falstad band away, so getting rid of that global. Okay, no gust, no flight, all that, all that... And he's actually, false has got fantastic wave clear as well. Good mobility, good wave clear. Uh, do, 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 right side. Maybe we see a Tracer ban. Could be a Genji ban as well. Uh, Dino Genji is annoying to deal with. It's actually going to be Grey Mane. Okay, so don't want to deal with the Curse Bullet chunking into Diablo, forcing him back. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. No, I don't think they'll go for like a... I don't think they'll, they'll go for like two more assassins here or like a, like a bruisery assassin, like a Thrall. I think this is going to be like something, something like a Dahaka into the blaze, maybe a Leoric, maybe a Urel. Actually, I love the idea of a Urel here for 30k. I think there's a lot of dive damage. So like Urel Cassia would be huge. I don't know. Well, I I think actually Urel Zeratul still wouldn't be bad either. Good ability to dive and stick onto Tychus and take him out. Uh, Cassia would be great for a blind. I know Madara plays a lot of Cassia, but we don't have Madara here today. There's a sub as Big Pex McFlex is here, aka yeah Boy, aka the uh, unaverted. No, not unaverted. Uh, Fancy Pants. It is going to be that Urel. So I do like that Righteous Hammer to bop back the dive of a new Barak and Karazim. You've got Maev for some control into the enemy heroes that dive in. So almost it's almost like 30k built this like punitive anti-jive draft. In the sense of like, yeah, Diablo wants to dive into enemy heroes' faces, but a new Brat goes in, now he's overpowered Shadow Charge. You got my F with an Emerald Bind, you got a Righteous Hammer. So it's kind of anti divey here, and I really love it. anti divey anti divey is the best at Christmas parties. She always gives you $20. All right, which team wins Sky Temple? Got uh, 30k on the left, HGC, EU low on the right. Give it a sub couple more moments here to get the load in. And we'll get our Twitch prediction on the way. Thanks everyone for hanging out. It's been a good day of games so far. and We got more coming at you. Lot of action today. All right, that should be good on timing. Let's get a gamble going for all of you wonderful humans at home. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Map number two in our second best of three of the day. We got four best of threes for all of you. So let's go ahead and take a look here on the right-hand side. It is going to be Hazuab's Blaze, Dino Jaina, Hopaka Tychus, Nagram on the Anubarak, and Yasu with your Karazim. Left side will be our team in the lead here on Sky Temple. Liam Urell will see a Diablo played by Cattle. Big Pex McFlex, a.k.a. Yeah, boy, a.k.a. Fancy Pants, will be playing Hanzo as the sub today for Madara. We've got a Legacy Brightwing and a Cure Maev playing on his standard Halloween horse. And no one freed Harrison Jones. Nobody freed Harrison Jones. Rudeness, he's still stuck in Tomb of the Spider Queen. He's probably dead to those giant spiders, I would assume. I would assume he's dead at this point. Back from the start, and I swear I can't leave there with less than $100 anymore. See the tr see 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 ninja. The trick is you don't you don't scan everything. You go to the self checkout and you don't scan everything. That's the trick, bud. <laughs> How you doing? Happy Saturday. Cattle discovered in the bush. Big Umbral Bind from Maev. Tries to get a Fan and Ive reset. Cattle's going to get some healing from Brightwing as well as that Fire Stomp. Uh, Cure might be able to get a kill, but he decides to stop chasing in. And that'll be no kill, but uh, both tanks, health bars threatened. 
Cattle, is he looking to delay the hearth with a fire stop? No, maybe he was, but either way. Uh, Cattle will tap well. Looks like Nagram is gonna save the tap for the time being and just hearth out completely. I, I, the, 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 I, I saw a Reddit post like two weeks ago where someone was like, this is what I got for like $100. And like the first comment was, yeah, because you didn't scan everything. <laughs> And it was like, it was an insane, like, it was an insane grocery haul. And I was like, okay, that's, yeah, definitely. Definitely not everything was scanned in that, in that purchase. But I feel you, Ninja. I feel you. That's why I go to the grocery store, like, two times a week. I usually go, like, on Mondays to buy, like, a couple things for the week. Like, bread, maybe some soup stuff. And then I usually go out on, like, Wednesday or Thursday after physical therapy or after stream. And then I buy, like, something for the weekend. But still, like, it still adds up, like... I'd say per week I'm still spending anywhere from like 50 to $100 depending on what I'm eating. I mean, a pot of soup is very cheap. That's that's usually not too much. Same thing with like uh, curry. Nice dive into bottom lane. First blood will go over to the side of 30k. As we have no believers in 30k. What's going on with these Twitch gambles, chat? We had like 40,000 to 40,000 for the first best of three of the day. And now it's like... Now we're just scared to predict? What happened, chat? What happened to you? You used to be someone. I think. What's up, Bactar? How you doing, bud? You actually almost did that. I had to double check because I realized the things I don't bag I didn't scan. Oh yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Because there are some, there's like, if you buy like a big thing of tissues, like you usually just throw that right back into the cart. I get you on that. Or like a case of beer. Like usually that doesn't go into a grocery bag. Oh, six to six in levels so far. My apologies. We have a new Brett going down. That's a second kill for 30k here. Hey, there we go. They got some big old gambles on 30k. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate it. In the rhythm for Tychus level one. In the rhythm, in the flow. Wait, that's not right. Top and mid objective. First two objective phases are standardized on Sky Temple. First being top and center. Second being singular in the bottom of the map. And currently have some scatters poking out. A little bit of auto attacks onto Holpaka here. Umbro bind onto Yasu. Spirit of Vengeance teleport. Fan and Ives going out from Cure. Did he go pin down? He did go pin down. Also, Liam Urel. I've been seeing more and more Urel players go for the Holy Avenger level 7, which I'm not... I'm pretty sure Holy Avenger wasn't changed in the most recent patch. I just feel like more players are kind of discovering how they like this working out with getting... Uh, how this works out for Urel is you get more Avenging Wrath potential. Cure is able to get out alive. Face shift from Legacy. He's almost going to go down. Nice Memento activated as well. Hazuobs is not able to burn down the Fairy Dragon. Meanwhile, Cattle uses a minion to get away. Gets a nice heal off of that fire stomp it is going to be here going down cattle going to try and make something happen here but no he's still just rotating down and out another fire stomp you're out with the avenging wrath over the wall and yasu is able to dash away to an ally still have a few temple shots left in the top lane looks like five standard and five of the uh last second but it, these are going to be given away top fort is going to be dropped down to about 50 or so percent urel does push up a wave in mid which gets decent or which will be clear but the fort already being uh chunked a little bit there i'm gonna go ahead and cycle through the other numbers right now usually you bulk order Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Turns out you still have no money. Have you thought about wishing for more money? I hear that works. I do that all the time. It, it doesn't. But you know what? You can hope. Uh, <laughs> Ten's on the top of our screen here in just a moment. Oh, what are we going to be seeing for these two teams? 3-2 to two in kills. Slight experience advantage over to the side of 30k as they're looking to invade this camp. Hazuobs. Met by Cattle with another Fire Stomp into all of this. Lightning Breath activated. Containment Disc. There's a Dragon Zero, and that will be Karazim going down. Hazuob's picked off. Diablo's going to go in further. Righteous Hammer splits the uh, uh, Tychus away. Arden Defender! And that's that Avenging Wrath level 7 I was talking about. God dang, Liam. Calm down. 
Dino is dead. I was about to say, is this going to be a boss call immediately? Because there's no objective phase up. You just got a triple kill overall, I do believe. Maybe, no, that was a quadra kill overall, actually. It was three to two just a moment ago. So, nice quadra kill. Death timers are just so low, it was hard to keep track. Legacy going to hearth out for full. Nagram going to see this. And uh, that's all he'll do. He'll be like, okay, yep, they got boss. That's that's definitely happening. Bottom shots will fire onto bottom fort. So this will be really, really good double siege between boss and objective phase for the side of 30k. I thought Cattle was going to reinitiate. And it actually looks like he is going to try and find something here. Actually, this is not a bad call. Boss may take down bottom fort, so then the shots go to the top lane fort. As Urel, Liam is pushing things onto the fort front gate. Azuab's playing safely. Able to close the distance quickly and not miss any experience, as he was grabbing that camp, actually. Not playing safe, he was just working on a camp. Bottom shots, though, will be grabbed, and those will go into the fort, amplifying the boss siege. Cattle chilling in the bush. I keep spending all my points on emotional damage. Hey! Use your points how you want to use them. I just heavily encouraged gambling in this channel. Newbrag burrows into the bush blind. May have seen cattle here, but either way, it doesn't matter. Cattle's able to drop a fire stomp, back away, fine. And Temple's given away Temple shots in the bottom lane. Commandeer Odin has been summoned as well. Proto charge into Impale. Cattle gonna get cleansed by Brightwing, I believe. There's a Shadow Charge into the corner. Jet Propulsion from Hazuab's a little late as Cattle's already rotated out. Lightning Breath to zone back the enemies. Hazu discovered that he's on the bottom lane objective from the Scatter Arrows, but also the shots will rain onto the fort in bottom lane. Newbrek burrowing in. They do see the URL on top, so this is an offset fight favoring the side of HCC EU lull. Granted, 13 talent here. URL is just still managing things for the for the allied side, and you the experience is flowing me. pretty good for 30k and map number two of our second best of three of the day. Alright, so Liam sees the rotation as he did grab this vision eye. It's going to be transferred back over to the enemy. So he'll probably grab that back in a moment after a wave crashes in. Some allies hanging around here. In mid, Impale. Ooh, that's a pretty decent dragon arrow onto Dino. Containment disc, Cocoon. Cocoon will, cocoon will be broken fast. Seven-sided strike, overpower, Dino will go down. As Yurel comes in for a flank with the Righteous Hammer, Hopaka trying to dash away. Another Avenging Wrath in. And Dino, or excuse me, and uh, Liam finds the double kill. Actually, it's Kier finding the double kill. Brightwing Le Legacy steals that last auto. And when is boss up and available? Two minutes and 30 seconds. Probably going to be seeing Siege Giants invaded and pushed into bottom lane. Keep front gate. Also, next objective phase shouldn't be far off from an announcement. Uh, we'll have top and bottom objectives. Liam actually might be able to kind of control most of top and confirm the rest of this fort's HP. He's pushing a wave into all of this as the double siege giants need to be dealt with in bottom. Half a level to go for 16. That might actually be happening a little bit faster. No actual dive onto a new brack after the containment disc. So containment disc goes out, creates a bit of space for the allies to back away. There is going to be a burrow charge in to try and take down Cure or at least CC him, but the avenging, the vault of the wardens will allow him to back away. And look at that! Temple activation in 25 seconds. Good call, Bandit. Nicely done, bud. Currently have Liam in top lane just taking a couple flames from Blaze. The vision was grabbed back by Liam, stolen away again by Dino. Cattle out of said vision, but he's just chilling in the bush. Newbrek will scout that. They see Liam going for the camp. They can make the assumption the enemy's on this. But it's a three-level difference here, chat. It's a three-level difference as Diablo Shadow charges in. Hopaka able to dash away. A containment disc is gonna... Whoa! Sorry about that. This containment disc is going to be anti-synergistic with that giant arrow from Hanzo. But the Umbral Bind, the Fan of Knives. Kier finds the first kill. Ardent Defender pop with, like, literally, I think, like, 10 or so HP. So very low for Liam. And this is going to be an absolute massacre in favor for the side of 30k. HTC EU lull. They're going to be losing a lot here as Cattle rushes down to bottom lane. It is a, it is actually a three level difference as we enter into 17 to 14. Top lane fort or keep front gate is going to be pushed in. We have a minion wave already here, a minion wave right behind and the bruiser camp as well. Bruiser camp on the left hand side is a, uh, just popping up and it looks like cure. No, they're not going to grab that. 
But the boss and such, or the siege giants actually in bottom lane, open up that keep front gate. The tower shots are coming through, and gotta say, Cattle still got a lot of objective phase that should be bottom keep going down. Camp in top lane pushes in. Last five shots almost take down the top lane keep. Yurel, she's not gonna scout out this camp, but she can make an assumption. Cattle gonna finish up bottom lane, and as I mentioned, that bottom keep should go down. The rest of the shots will go into mid lane keep front gate. Bosses respawned. I mentioned about three minutes ago that boss was ready to go in two minute 30, so it's been sitting here for a moment. Still 16 talents here advantage. The experience gap has closed a little bit. Water Elemental, Containment Disc onto a new brack mid burrow. Jet Propulsion from the Blaze. Can Cattle get onto this point in time? Yes, he can. Liam's here as well with some Righteous Hammering. Dragon's Arrow from Hanzo going through a few enemies. There's going to be Cure trying to back away, or at least actually pulling people away with the Umbral Bind. Dino might be able to get the kill. Phantom Knives going out. Currently have Diablo and Yorel taken out as Maev is going to be blasted with that Cone of Cold. Now Big Pex McFlex trying to get away. The phase shift from Brightwing interrupted by a grenade and now legacy and big pex mcflex they're trying to get out of here but there's a dino on the bridge they just they don't really have an exit strategy in this and the oh wait hold on diablo comes in from the respawn shadow charging in to dino the ice block is activated uh oh diablo getting a little bit low so many low red health bars dino does go down to diablo but karazim should have the kill Cattle lands a good shadow charge heals up a little bit tries to avoid some of the cc miss is able to avoid one from that burrow charge of Anubarak. Yasu slowed, seven-sided strike will take down Diablo. And that's a nice batch of kills as Big Pex McFlex gets a bit of revenge in bottom onto the Tychus. We'll be able to hearth out and Hazuabs pushes up bottom lane. Meanwhile in bottom, Siege Giants have arrived at the core, but they won't get much more than scratches on that shielding. What a back and forth, chat. Wait, what? What? Containment disc wasn't even used. What happened? I, uh, okay. I was like, oh, this is just going to be, you know, Blaze gets out fine. No big deal. Nope. All right. Well, apparently Tychus gets killed at the end. Blaze just goes down randomly. And this will be a singular altar in the bottom of the map. Uh, firing onto the mid lane keep front gate and keep. I don't think there's enough shots to go through all of that and get one or two onto this top. So still, though, the map is being opened up further and further and further for 30k. That boss will be up in 3 minute 21, so about uh, 17 minutes in game time or so. A couple shots will be fired out. Looks like the priority's onto the wave here to try and guarantee that 20 talent here. Nubarak burrowing, trying to chase down Liam, doesn't find him. Little beetle, little scarab to scout out right there. Shots go back in control of 30k. Brightwing, legacy left on the point. And what do the side of HCCU lull want to do? Uh, I guess they'll try and steal away a camp over here. Cattle? He's going to see that. Yeah, he's, he's going to see the little poke over the wall just to see. Okay. Both both teams just checking who's on that camp. It's nobody. Uh, more shots. Actually, all right. The shots are going to be enough to take down mid keep and top. Nicely done. Pew, 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 pew. Nice. All right. Well, consistent catapult pressure in all three lanes. Periodic catapult pressure up against uh, 30k here. So, no. Tychus in the bush. Dragon's there to follow up. The bullseye level 20 with that little stun. A new break burrowing in. They want to take down Big Pex McFlex. The blink heal comes through. That's going to be a soothing miss from Brightwing activated. Big Pex McFlex able to get that natural agility away. No kills or no trade, but a little, a little sketchy moment for our Hanzo players. He almost got bursted down. What's up, Ken? How you doing, bud? Happy Saturday to all of you. Thanks for hanging out with us here. Much appreciate it. Next objective phase is going to be double temples. And uh, at this point, the members of HCC LOL can't just sit around and trade. They can't... I mean, it's going to be core shots versus uh, mid-fort, potentially. Or... T uh, no, mid-fort. Mid-fort. Both of these will prioritize mid-fort. And then they'll go into their respective lanes. But currently have an invade under this camp. And, I mean, nothing... HCCE low can do for the next quarter level. It's a 10 kill difference between these two teams, 17 to 7. And 21 rolling in. And we didn't talk about 20s here, but we did mention a few things. We got Invisible Friends, we got that Bullseye, we'll have Seraphim for Urel, Hellgate, Diablo, and last but not least, we have the Shadow Orb Huntress 
or Yorel. Activate to increase the movement speed and attack speed by 40% for 5 seconds. Recharge Shadow Orb by dealing physical damage to enemy heroes 10 times. Soon they shall die. Quick camp grab for bottom lane. Boss up in 42 seconds, so just under that 17 minute mark in game time. But it feels like we're gonna get into a big old fight here in top lane. Some fire stomps out from Diablo. He's not full souls. He doesn't have the buyback. He's trying to back away. The dragon's there from Hanzo coming through. We also have Legacy with a base shift in and a couple blink heals. Dino did pop that advanced ice block as we had Cure threatening. Big Pex McFlex and friends able to back away. Yorel does have temple shots in top lane. Those are gonna rail. Rail. Those are going to be uh, firing into the core in top lane. Righteous Hammer to buy a little bit more time. Looks like Blaze does go down because Anubrek was trying to jump into top lane. I believe that was a Hellgate. Yeah, because we have Lightning Breath Diablo cooking up Dino currently. And this is going to be Tychus and Anubrek trying to make something happen. Meanwhile, Yorel is just currently dancing on top lane point. Yeah, Hanzo goes down, but you're about to lose your Tychus as well as the Anubrek. And actually, you won't lose Anubrek. The core will fall. GG well played. 30k take a 2-0 against HGC EU Lola.